Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the report for FY22 House Homeland Security Appropriations Bill directed the IG to review FEMA's individual assistance program and identify whether recommendations from oversight entities, including the, including the OIG, may have inadvertently led FEMA to develop policies and procedures that are overly restrictive and prevent disaster survivors from accessing aid. Uh, Ms. Bernard, uh, can you summarize the IG's findings and explain how the IG considers hardships, uh, the hardships that disaster survivors are experiencing and the need for quick assistance when issuing recommendations to minimize waste, fraud, and abuse? Certainly, thank you for that question, I'd be happy to. Um, the work that we've done on individual assistance um, has been primarily focused on FEMA's administration of the individual assistance um, programs in terms of its management and oversight. Um, we have not done specific work to look at um, whether the administration was equitable or streamlined, but what we have found is FEMA should make improvements to be sure that applicants are eligible for the benefits that they're receiving and that costs are allowable. Were the findings from your review incorporated into recent reports, including the 23 report on FEMA's COVID-19 funeral assistance program delivery? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Were the findings from the review incorporated into recent IG reports, including the 23, the 2023 report on FEMA's COVID-19 funeral assistance program delivery? Uh, yes, we, we did release, I believe you're asking if we released a report on uh, FEMA's oversight of the funeral assistance program, and yes, we did issue you did, findings. And were the findings from the, tw uh, the 22 review, the 22 review that Homeland Security Appropriations Bill asked for, were the results from those findings incorporated into your review? I would have to check to Great, um, make sure. Thanks. I will say, reading your testimony, just read, made me think that we have a pre-COVID-19 set of policies and procedures that we're applying to a global pandemic response, and perhaps they don't fit. Um, but those are the rules and procedures that you have to apply when in fact maybe they weren't the best things to apply to a situation where we were all scrambling to a randomness of, uh, a randomness that came with, with COVID-19. Um, not, not that you didn't find legitimate fraud, waste, and abuse, but some of your testimony, though, talks about things that maybe in your judgment weren't allowable, but it's not really firm that it wasn't allowable. It's just that you, the OIG made a judgment about things as opposed to put it up against a, a hard metric. Um, I will say in conducting our audit work using the funeral assistance program as an example, we do use our criteria the criteria is the Stafford Act and whether the expenses are necessary or, um, or allowable. So we do have a very specific set of criteria that we're testing against. So I don't, I don't believe the findings are open for interpretation, but FEMA does certainly have the latitude um, to um, issue waivers or um, to interpret its policies. I believe our findings, the key message was that FEMA was interpreting the Stafford Act requirements differently for COVID-19 deaths than it had for deaths from other disasters. So we just asked well, FEMA I, to yeah. um, be consistent in its application of the uh, Stafford Act. I try not to be too flip around here, but to the family that spent $727 on flowers for their loved one's funeral, I'm glad they spent it on that. Um, Administrator Creswell, in uh, 23, NOAA reported that damages, and I covered this, uh, damages from disasters totaled $92.9 billion. Um, can you talk uh, for, for and, and 28 separate climate disasters, do you believe that, can you give us some guidance on pre and post disaster mitigation resources and how you would better use them in order to deal with this increasing this frequency of, of extreme weather event and climate change based disasters? Yes, Ranking Member Larson, uh, we are seeing an increase in the number and the severity of the severe weather events that we are responding to, which are creating more complex and complicated and costly recoveries. Uh, our focus this year has really been to lift up the part of our agency that does the work before disasters, the before part of our mission statement, 
investing in our mitigation programs like the Building Resilient Infrastructure and in Communities, as well as our flood mitigation assistance and our post-disaster mitigation through the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. These are three programs that can really help communities build to a level of resilience that they can reduce the impact that they can expect to see in the next five or 10 years, even 20 years from these severe weather events that are happening. Um, but we also focus on individual resilience and helping communities become better prepared so individuals know the steps that they need to take to protect themselves and their families in the event that they are in the path of one of these storms. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I yield back. 